Hello there friends, it's Ashley here from the Loopy Lamb and loopylamb.com and thanks so much for stopping by the channel today. It is week 13 and 14 of the 2023 Amigurumi Advent Calendar Crochet Along. That means this is a two pattern week and so we have two projects to make this week. The two projects that we're going to be making get put together in order to make this super cute pair of PJs for our dolls. So these crochet doll PJs are quick and easy to make. They're fun and easy to customize and kids will love the functional little pockets on the front. So today I'm going to walk you through step by step how to make your own crochet doll PJs. But before we jump into crocheting, let's cover what materials you're going to need in order to follow along with today's tutorial. To follow along with today's tutorial and make a cute pair of pajamas for your amigurumi doll, you're going to need the following materials. You'll need a worsted weight yarn in your color of preference. Today I'm going to be using the Brava worsted weight line from We Crochet in the color Clarity. You'll need a 3.5mm or E crochet hook or whatever size hook that you've been using to match the gauge given in the patterns to, uh, for the crochet along to date. You'll need a uh, stitch marker or two. You'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle five nine millimeter buttons and a sewing needle and sewing thread in a color that matches your yarn of choice. So let me clear off my workspace here and we'll dive right in making our PJs for our crochet dolls. To start our pajama top for our doll, we're going to need to start with a chain of 23. To start our chain, we need to start with a slip knot. So I'm going to lay the tail end of my yarn across my palm and pin it down with my thumb. Then I'm going to wrap the yarn around my fingers, around to the back, and then bringing it to the front. Then I'm going to cross it over itself like this to create an X. Then holding onto that yarn, I'm going to flip my hand over, bringing the yarn with me. And then I'm going to pin that yarn down between my ring finger and my middle finger. Then I'm going to take my crochet hook and insert it under the first strand over the second and then pull that second strand out and under the first and then I'm going to gently transfer all of the yarn from my fingers to the crochet hook. Then I'm going to pull both strands of the yarn to tighten up the knot and then I'm going to grab the, t the end of the yarn that is still attached to the ball and pull that tightly up to the crochet hook. Now, yes, technically all the yarn is still attached to the ball, but when I say attached to the ball, I mean not the tail end here. All right, so we're going to start with our chain of 23. And to start our chain, we're going to yarn over hook and pull the yarn through the loop on our hook. That's one chain. To do our second chain, we're going to yarn over and pull through the loop again, and that's two. We're going to yarn over and pull through the loop again, and that's three. We're going to continue this yarn over and pull through the loop until we have 23 chains. So if you'd like to pause your video, meet me back here when you have 23 chains. I'll show you how to count them when we come back, and then we'll start on row one. All right, so I'm back and I have my 23 chains ready to go here. And you can count your chains by turning your chain towards you and identifying the Vs across the top of your chain. And you would just count each of those V's work, starting from your slip knot and working towards your opposite hand, counting each of those V's across and you should have 23. We never count the yarn on our hook as a chain. So you would stop in this last chain here before you get to your hook. And now we're ready to start crocheting. For row one, we need we start row one by creating a buttonhole for our pajama top. And we do that by skipping the first six chains and placing a single crochet in the seventh chain from the hook. Now, we, to count over, we're going to, again, we don't count that yarn on our hook, and we're going to start counting from this first chain here, and we're going to count over six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So I'm going to uh, put my finger here right next to that seventh chain, because I know that's where I'm going to be inserting my hook to do my first stitch. So inserting the hook into that seventh chain, I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop. You should have two loops on your hook at this point. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops. And that's your first single crochet completed. Now you should have this little loop at the beginning because this little chain six loop is going to be your first buttonhole. 
Now we're going to work one single crochet into each of the remaining chains across. So we're going to insert our hook into that very next chain, yarn over and pull up a loop. There should be two loops on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops. And that is our second single crochet completed. So working into this third chain here, inserting our hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. There should be two loops on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops to complete our next single crochet. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one single crochet stitch into each of these chains across, I'll meet you back here at the end of the row to show you how we're going to be moving on to row two. At the end of this row, you should have 17 single crochet stitches and that chain six space buttonhole that we created at the beginning. So I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So I just finished my last stitch of row one and I'm ready to move into row two. To start row one, we're going to yarn over and chain up one. Then we're going to turn our work. If you're right-handed, you should be working from right to left. And if you're left-handed, you should be working from left to right. And uh, row two is the wrong side of our work, making the odd numbered rows the right side of our fabric. So to start row two, we're going to work one single crochet into each of the first two stitches. So working into that first stitch, we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both loops, and that's your first single crochet completed. Then we're going to single crochet into the next stitch. Now we're going to do what's called a single crochet increase. When you do a single crochet increase, it means that you're placing two single crochets into the same stitch. So working into that next stitch, we're going to single crochet once, and then back into that same stitch, we're going to single crochet a second time. And now we're going to single crochet once into each of the next two stitches. So there's one, and here's two. And now we're going to work another single crochet increase into this next stitch. So again, that's two single crochets worked into the same stitch. And now we're going to work one single crochet into the next stitch and a single crochet increase or two single crochets in the same stitch into the next. So there's the first part of our increase and the second part of our increase. Now we will work one single crochet into the next stitch and a single crochet increase into the next. One single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet increase into the next. Now we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. Now we will single crochet increase into the next stitch. And we will single crochet once into each of the last two stitches. At the end of row two, you should have 23 stitches. And again, you can count your stitches if you turn your work towards you and you find those V's at the top of your work and count those V's from one end to the other. Now we stop working here because we're never going to be working into these chain six spaces because those are our button loops. So when we, we will always end our, st our work in a row at the last single crochet and we will always pretend that that chain six space is not there because we won't be working into it. Now we're ready to move on to row three. To start row three, we're going to yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. To start row three, we're going to place one single crochet into each of the first three stitches. Now 
Oops. Now we will do a single crochet increase into the next stitch. We will single crochet once into each of the next three stitches. And now we will single crochet increase into the next stitch. Now we will work one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. There's one and two. We'll single crochet increase into this next stitch here. And then we'll play, work one single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet increase into the next stitch. And single crochet once into each of the next two stitches. We'll single crochet increase into the next stitch. And single crochet once into each of the next three stitches. Now we'll do a single crochet increase into the next stitch. Single crochet once into each of the next two stitches. And we'll work a single crochet increase into this last stitch here. At the end of row three, you should have 30 single crochet stitches. And now we're ready to move on to row four. To start row four, we're going to yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. To start row four, we're going to work one single crochet into each of the first three stitches. There's one. And three. And now we're going to create our first armhole for our pajama top. And to do that, we're going to do a chain of seven. So we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. That's one. Yarn over and pull up a loop. That's two. And we're going to continue to do this yarn over and pull up a loop until we have seven chains. So now we're going to skip eight stitches in our piece. So to start counting, you're going to identify the first stitch that's next to the last actual single crochet that you worked. And for me, that's this stitch here. And we're going to count over eight stitches. So I'm going to count those V's and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I'm going to put my finger here next to that ninth stitch because I know that's where I'm going to be working my next single crochet. And so I'm going to single crochet into that ninth stitch. And you can see that that has created our first armhole. Now we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next seven stitches. There's one. Four. And seven. So now that we have done our seven single crochets, we're going to create our second armhole. To do that, we're going to need to create another chain seven. So we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull up a loop, and we're going to continue to yarn over and pull up a loop until we have seven chains. And now we need to skip eight stitches in our piece. So again, starting in the first empty stitch, that's directly next to the last single crochet you worked, we're going to count over uh, eight. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And so I'm going to place my finger next to that ninth stitch and I'm going to work a single crochet into that ninth stitch. And now we're going to place one single crochet into each of the last two stitches. At the end of this row, we should have 14 stitches and these two chain spaces that will be our armholes later on. So moving into row five, we're going to create another buttonhole for the front of our pajamas. So we're going to do a chain of six. So yarn over and pull up a loop, that's one yarn over and pull up a loop, there's two. We're going to continue to yarn over and pull up a loop until we have six chains. Now that we have our six chains, we're going to turn our work and we're going to skip these six chains and begin working into the last single crochet we, work, we created in row four. So we're going to skip these six chains and work one single crochet into that last single crochet from the previous row. And that is our net, our uh, newest buttonhole here. And now we're going to work one single crochet into each remaining stitch and chain across. So we're going to work these two single crochets here, and this will take us to our chain spaces. Now it's always a good idea to make sure that you're taking a moment and counting your stitches at the end of every row and I find it particularly important in the rows where we're working into the chains because sometimes your chains at the beginning and the end can get a little smaller than uh, the rest of your chains and there can be easy to miss or you can sometimes pick up stitches. So it's always important to take a moment at the end to count those stitches to save yourself potentially some time later. So to work into those chains I'm going to turn those chains so the V's are facing me, and then I'm going to work one single crochet into each of those chains. Now, if you'd like to pause your video, we're just working one single crochet into each of these stitches and chains across our piece. And at the end of row six, you should have 28 stitches plus that chain six space buttonhole that we created. So if you'd like to pause your video, I'll meet you back here at the end of row five and show you how we'll be moving in to row six. All right, I just did my last stitch of row five and I'm ready to move into row six. Now rows six and seven are both done the exact same way. They are going to yarn over and chain up one and turn your work. Then you're going to work one single crochet into each stitch across. You're not going to be making any stitch count changes, so you should still have those 28 stitches at the end of each row. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one single crochet into each stitch across, I'll meet you back here at the end of row seven, showing you how we're moving in to row eight. So I'm back and we just finished the last stitch of row seven and we're moving into row eight. To start row eight, we're going to yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. So for row eight, we have a pattern repeat that we need to do a total of seven times. And I'm going to show you that repeat now. The repeat starts by working one single crochet into each of the first three stitches. There's one and three. And now we're going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. So because we haven't done that for a bit, and I'll just remind you that an increase is two single crochets worked into the same stitch. And that is one repeat completed. So our repeat is three single crochets followed by a single crochet increase. And we're going to do this over and over again across our row for a total of seven repeats. So I'll show you that again. We're going to work one single crochet into each of the first three stitches. followed by a single crochet increase. And that's our second repeat completed. I'll show you one more time. We're working one single crochet into each of the first three stitches. Followed by a single crochet increase into the next. 
So if you'd like to pause your video and continue this pattern of three single crochets followed by a single crochet increase until the end of the row, I'll meet you back here at the end of the row showing you how we're moving into row nine. At the end of this row, you should have 35 single crochet stitches. So I'll meet you back here in just a moment. All right, so we're ready to move into row nine and in row nine we create a nether buttonhole. So we're starting that by doing a chain of six. So again, we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. There's one, yarn over and pull up a loop. There's two. We're going to continue this yarn over and pulling up a loop until we have six chains. Now that we have our six chains, we're going to turn our work. So we're going to start by skipping these six chains and working a single crochet increase, or goodness, just a single crochet into that first stitch. So again, we're gonna skip these six chains and work one single crochet into that first stitch. And that creates our third buttonhole. And now we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next 16 stitches. is eight. Twelve. And sixteen. So now that we have 16 single crochets completed, I am going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And now we're going to work one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches of the row. You should have 17 stitches remaining. At the end of this row, you should have 36 stitches plus your chain six space buttonhole. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one single crochet into each stitch until the end of the row, I'll meet you back here at the end of the row and show you how we're moving into row 10. All right, so we're back and we're ready to start row 10. To start, we're going to yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. So we have another pattern repeat that we need to do for row 10, and we're going to do this repeat a total of six times. The repeat is one single crochet into each of the first five stitches followed by an increase, and I'll show you how to do that now. So we're working five single crochets, or one single crochet into the first five stitches. So there's one, three, and five. Now that I've done five single crochets, I'm going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And that is our first pattern repeat completed. And we'll do that again. One single crochet into each of the first five stitches. There's one, three, and five. Now that we have our five single crochets completed, we're going to work a single crochet increase into the last stitch. So if you'd like to pause your video and work uh, five single crochets followed by a single crochet increase four more times until the end of the row, at the end of this row you should have 42 stitches and I'll meet you back here at the end of the row to show you how we're moving into row 11. All right, so I'm back. I just finished my last stitch of row 10 and I'm moving into row 11. Now rows 11 and 12 are both done the same way. You're going to yarn over and chain up one and turn your work. And then you're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch across. At the end of rows 11 and 12, for both rows, you should have 42 single crochet stitches. So if you'd like to pause your video now and do rows 11 and 12, working one single crochet into each stitch across, I'll meet you back here at the end of row 12 to show you how we're moving into row 13. So I'm back and I just finished my last stitch of row 12 and we're moving into row 13. In row th 13, we're going to create a nether buttonhole. So we're going to have to start with a chain six. So we're going to yarn over hook and pull up a loop. Then you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop again. And we're going to continue to yarn over and pull up a loop until we have six chains. Now that we have our six chains, I'm going to turn my work. 
and we're starting a row 13. So we're going to skip these six chains and we're going to place one single crochet into the last single crochet from the previous row. So again, skipping those six chains, we're single crocheting into that first actual single crochet. And there is our next buttonhole. So for the rest of this row, we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch across. At the end of this row, you should have 42 single crochets and your chain six buttonhole. So if you'd like to pause your video and meet me back here in just a moment, I'll show you how we're going to move into row 14 at the end of row 13. All right, so I'm back. We're at the end of row 13 and preparing to move into row 14. Now rows 14 through 17 are all done the same way. We're going to yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. And we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch across. So if you'd like to pause your video and work rows 14 through 17, working one single crochet into each stitch across, I'll meet you back at the end, back here at the end of row 17 and show you what our next steps will be. All right, so I just finished my last stitch of row 17 and I'm ready to finish off my pajama top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in my scissors and cut a tail of at least four to six inches long. And then you can either pull your yarn all the way through the last stitch or yarn over and pull the yarn through the stitch and pull that yarn all the way through. And then if you'd like, you can take a moment to weave in your ends and then we're ready to start working on our sleeves for our pajama top. So now that we're ready to start our sleeves, you need to have the right side of your fabric facing you. And now I did touch on this at the beginning of the video, but I'll remind you here that the right side of the fabric is when the odd numbered rows are facing you and the even numbered rows are facing away from you. If you haven't woven in your ends yet, the when you lay your project flat like this, the buttonholes should be on the left-hand side for right handed crocheters and right handed side buttons for right handed or left handed crocheters and the yarn tail should be on the right side at the top for right handed crocheters and it should be on the upper left side for left handed crocheters. So now that we're going to attach our yarn for our sleeve we're going to bring in our yarn again and we're going to create a slip knot. And we touched on this at the beginning of the video, so I'm gonna do this relatively quickly. And we're going to slip that slip knot onto our crochet hook. Now bringing in our top, we're going to find the center point at the bottom of one of our armholes. Now, we did a um, skip eight in the bottom here, so we will have eight stitches. So it's really hard to find the exact center because there is an even number of stitches. So you're just going to want to find the approximate center point. It's not going, it's not an exact science. So just find whatever you think looks good for the center point and insert your hook into that stitch. And you can see that we've got the loops here from when uh, we did our chain, there should be set a set of loops left over and you're just going to insert your hook under that last, that last loop that's remaining, okay? And remember your slip knot is on your hook still. So you should have two loops on your hook, the loop from the stitch and the loop from your slip knot. So we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. You'll have two loops on your hook and then we're going to yarn over and pull through both stitches. This is called a standing single crochet or a single crochet join, and this helps to eliminate the need for a slip stitch and a chain one, making it a bit of a cleaner join for us. So now that we have joined our yarn, we're going to single crochet 17 stitches around our armhole. So we're going to start in the next stitch, again, working in that remaining loop from our chain, we're going to insert our hook into that chain and single crochet. Now, if you wanted to, you could, we, uh, while you're crocheting, you can crochet over the tail from your join, so that way you don't have to weave it in later. And as we're going to continue, we're just working around the armhole in all the stitches. So we've got our next chain here and we're single crocheting. Our next chain here and single crocheting. So we're just going to work around the armhole until we have a total of 18 stitches because our single crochet join counts as one. So we're adding 17 more single crochets. 
So we're going to flip our work around and we're just going to start single crocheting along the top. And we've got the V's remaining from the skip stitches in the, this row here when we crocheted our armholes. So that makes this top section a lot easier. All right, so I've crocheted all the way around my armhole and I took a moment there and I just counted my stitches that I have 18. Now, when you're doing the sides here, it's not exactly an exact science. It's, you know, if you need to add an extra stitch on this side or on this side into the side of the armhole, you can totally do that. Um, it's not going to make or break your sleeve. So now that I have my 18 single crochets, I'm going to join my last stitch to my first stitch here with a slip stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook into that first stitch we created, and then we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. There's two loops on your hook. Then I'm going to pull that loop I just pulled up through the loop on my hook to create a slip knot, or goodness, a slip stitch. And that is our round one completed. Now at this point, I highly recommend that you bring in at a stitch marker at this point because I personally find it super helpful when I'm working in joined rows to help make sure that I'm not picking up or dropping extra or, or dropping stitches or losing them because that slip stitch join and when we add our chain one to move into the next row uh, it kind of obstructs the view of your first and last stitches so it's really easy to pick up or lose stitches at that point but if you use a stitch marker and you place it in the first stitch here that you did of that round, it helps you to know where to end your next round and it can help you um, not pick up or drop any stitches. So we're moving into round two and round two and three are done the same way. We're going to yarn over and chain up one and we're going to turn our work. Then we're going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. So we've already done this before. We've worked one single crochet into each stitch. So what I would su suggest is that you take a moment and pause your video and do this one round of one single crochet into each stitch across. And then meet me back at the end of the row because I'm going to show you how we end row two before moving on to row three. All right, so I just finished my last stitch of row two. And before I move on to round three, I need to join my last stitch to my first stitch with a slip stitch. So I'm gonna insert my hook into that first stitch of the round, yarn over and pull up a loop. And then I'm gonna pull that loop through the loop on my hook. And then I'm ready to chain one. And I'm going to turn my work, but before I do that, I'm just placing my stitch marker here in my first stitch of the round. So I know where to stop in my next round. And round three is done the same way as round two. We're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around, and then we'll join our last stitch to our first stitch with a slip stitch at the end of round three, like we just did in round two. So if you'd like to pause your video and finish round three, working one single crochet in each stitch around, and then joining your last stitch to the first stitch with a slip stitch, I'll meet you back here in just a second to show you what we're doing next. So I just finished my last stitches of round three. I did my last single crochet and I've joined my last stitch to my first stitch with a slip stitch. So now that I'm done, I can finish off my sleeve. I'm going to cut my yarn, leaving a tail of at least four to six inches. And then I can just pull that yarn all the way through that last stitch and pulling it tight. And that's how you do the sleeves. Now you'll have to pause the video and uh, rewind the video to go back to repeat these instructions on the other armhole. All right, so I'm going to do to uh, move on and show you how to do the pockets that go on the front of the pajamas. But again, if you want to do your other sleeve now, you can pause the video, do the other sleeve, and then catch up with me here to uh, learn how to make the pockets for our top. All right, to make the pockets for our pajama top, we're going to need to start with a slip knot. And we've already done this a couple of times now, so I will just whip a slip knot up quickly here and place it on my crochet hook. We're going to need to start our pockets with a chain of seven. So we're gonna yarn over and pull up a loop. That's one. Yarn over and pull up a loop. That's two. We're going to continue to do this yarn over and pull up a loop until we have seven chains. So 
So now that we have seven chains, we're going to start row one. So to start, we're going to work one single crochet in the second chain from the hook. Again, we never count that yarn that's on our hook, and we're going to count over for starting with this chain here. We're going to count over, count over one and two. I'm going to place my finger directly next to chain two so I know where I'm going to be inserting my hook. So inserting my hook into that second chain, I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop. Then yarn over and pull through both loops to single crochet. And then we're just going to work one single crochet into each chain across. At the end of this row, you should have six single crochet stitches. All right, so we're at the end of row one and we're ready to move into row two. Rows two through six are all done the same way. We're going to yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. And then we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch across. At the end of every row, you should have one, uh, goodness, we should have six single crochets at the end of every row. So if you'd like to pause your video and do rows two through six, I will meet you back here at the end of row six to show you how we're going to finish off our pocket and add it to our top. All right, so I'm here at the end of row six and I'm ready to finish off my pocket. So I'm going to cut a tail uh, of yarn leaving probably about eight to 10 inches just to be on the safe side because we're going to be using this yarn tail to sew our pockets onto our tops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, pull that yarn tail all the way through my last stitch. And I'm going to need my tapestry needle to sew this onto the top. So now that I've got my top here, um, I've got my, I, I like to personally just fold it in half to see where my buttonholes are going to line up because I want my pockets to be, I don't want them to be like immediately right next to the buttonholes and then interfere with the placement of my buttons. So what I like to do is I like to close the top, kind of get an idea where it's going to be placed and then make sure that there's a stitch or two between the pocket location and where my buttons will be placed. So you could also try this on the doll and then see where you like your um, pocket placement as well before sewing it on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to thread my tapestry needle onto my yarn tail and I have the right side facing of the pocket facing me. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work through three sides of the pocket, right? We want to work down this side, the bottom and the opposite side and we're going to leave that top edge open because we like to have functional pockets. It seems really silly but I like to have functional pockets even though obviously the dolls aren't going to be using them. <laughs> but kids like the functional pockets. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our yarn tail and we're going to insert our um, tapestry needle into the fabric directly below the stitch where our yarn is attached. And we're going to pick up a couple of strands of a stitch underneath. We're going to pull that all the way through. Then we're going to come up in through the edge of the pocket and pull the yarn all the way through. And we're just going to whip stitch this pocket onto the top. And again, we're just working around three sides of the pocket here. And when you get to the bottom, I like to work through the remaining loops at the bottom of the foundation row here. And then again, we're picking up stitches directly underneath where we're working into onto the pocket. So again, we're just working into the stitches directly underneath where we're going to be working into the pocket. And then back into the bottom of the pocket. And again, I'm working through the bottom loops of the foundation chain here. Now, when you're done uh, sewing onto your pocket, what you're going to do is you're, you'll weave in your ends and then 
uh, you'll need to rewind your video in order to go back and make a second pocket. Now, when you have your second pocket completed, what you'll do is you'll sew your pocket onto the opposite side of the top, just as we are here. Now you could leave the sewing of the pockets to the very end if you'd like, um, but I like to live dangerously a little <laughs> and I sew my things usually before, like after I complete one, I'll sew one on, then I'll complete another piece, then I'll sew it on. Not doesn't always work out the best for me, but that's how I tend to do things. <laughs> Kind of like a do as I say, not as I do scenario. All right, so I'm at the top of the pocket here. And then once I'm done, I'm just going to pull my yarn tail to the inside of my piece. And then I'll proceed to weave in my ends. All right, so as I've already mentioned, at, um, when you're done with this, you can just uh, rewind the video and make yourself a second pocket and sew that pocket on to the front of your top. And then once we've got our second pocket sewn on, we have one more thing that we need to do. And I'm gonna show you that in just a moment. All right, so once we have our pockets sewn on, we have our ends woven in, it's time to put the finishing touches on our pajama top. Now, as I mentioned, you're going to need at least four of these uh, nine millimeter buttons. If for some reason you've um, done some sort of customization and added more buttonholes, then you would need more than the four. But we're, I just have these little four nine millimeter buttons and I'm going to take one off the card here for us. Now I would be using my sewing needle and thread and I would take my buttons, lining them up into the spaces directly across from where my chain spaces lay on the, this side of the fabric and then sew my buttons onto the, uh, well in this case, the left side of the jacket, it's left side for me. So um, I would just line my buttons up, sew them on and then once I was finished with that, I'd, well, I still have ends to weave in, but I weave in my ends and we're ready to go. And that's how you make your uh, doll pajama top. To start our pajama shorts, we're going to need to start with a slip knot. So we're going to take our yarn and lay it across our palm like this and pinning it down with our thumb. Then we're going to take the uh, working end of our yarn and wrap it around the back of our fingers and bringing it back to the front. Then we're gonna cross it over itself like this to create an X. Bring your, flip your hand over like this and bring your yarn with you and pin it down between your middle finger and your ring finger. Then you're going to insert your hook under the first strand over the second and then pull that second strand out and under the first strand and switch all the yarn off of your fingers and onto the hook. Then grab your ends of your yarn and pull that knot tight. Then grab the working end of your yarn, the one that still attached to the ball, and pull that knot until it is up and snug against your hook. Then we're ready to get started. So these shorts are crocheted from the bottom up, which means that we're going to crochet each pant leg first, and then we'll join them and create the body or main part of our shorts after that. So to start our first pant leg, we're going to start with a chain of 20. So we're going to yarn over hook and pull that yarn through the loop on our hook to create our first chain. Then we're going to yarn over again and pull that yarn through the loop on our hook to create our second chain. We're going to continue to do this yarn over hook and pulling through the loop until we have 20 chains. So if you'd like to pause your video and continue to do this until you have 20 chains, I'll meet you back here in just a moment. 
So I'm back and I have my 20 chains. You can count your chains by flipping your work so you can see these little V's facing you. And then you would just count each V from left to right if you're left-handed and right to left if you're left-handed. And you're gonna count those V's and make sure you have 20. You never count the yarn on your hook as a chain. Be, uh, you just don't count that in any of your uh, counting, whether you're counting chains, stitches, or anything like that. So now we're ready to create a loop with our chain. And we wanna make sure that we don't twist our chain. And I like to do that by flipping my chain over so I can see these little bumps on the back, and then taking my finger, placing it into the middle, and literally just folding it in half. So that way the first chain is next to my hook, and then I can insert my hook into that first chain. And there should not be any twists in your chain. So now that I've got my hook into that first chain, I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop. And then I'm gonna pull that loop I just pulled up through the loop on my hook to join the chain with a slip stitch. And this creates a ring that we're going to be, uh, that will become our first pant leg. So now we're going to yarn over and chain up one. Now at this point, I like to bring in a stitch marker, especially if you um, get confused about the location of your first and your last stitch. This is why I said in the materials, you could use one or two stitch markers, um, depending on how comfortable you are. So I like to always mark the last chain or the where my last stitch will be. If you need to mark where the first stitch will be after you do your slip stitch, you can do that as well. Uh, but I always like to mark that last stitch. So it helps me make sure that I'm not picking up or dropping any stitches. So now we're going to work one single crochet in each chain around. So into that first chain there, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. There should be two loops on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops. And that is your first single crochet completed. So inserting our hook into the next chain, we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. There again are two loops on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops. And that's your next single crochet completed. So what we're going to do is we're just going to work one single crochet into each chain around. So if you'd like to pause your video, meet me back at the end of this row where you've done 20 single crochets. Um, meet you back here at the end of the row to show you how we're going to finish off this row and move into row two. So I'm at the end of round one and you should have 20 single crochets. If you need to count your stitches, I recommend flipping your work up until you can see both loops of the V on the top of your work and then counting each of those V's around. Again, you should have 20. Now we're going to join our last stitch to our first stitch with a slip stitch. Now we're going to insert a hook under both loops of the first stitch that we did. We'll yarn over hook and pull up a loop. You should have two loops on your hook. Then you're gonna pull the loop that you just pulled up through the loop that was already on your hook. And that is your slip stitch join. You often see this written in patterns after the first round as just join uh, with the expectation you would know that joining means you're joining with that slip stitch. So uh, now we're going to yarn over and chain up one. And before I turn my work, I'm gonna grab my stitch marker again, and I'm going to mark what was the first stitch of the last round, because that's going to be the last stitch of my next round. And I want to make sure I'm not losing that stitch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my work, and I'm ready to start with round two. For round two, uh, we're going to place one single crochet into each stitch around. So inserting into that first stitch, And there's your first single crochet. And I'll do that again. Insert into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, and that's your next single crochet. So we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one stitch, in, one single crochet into each stitch around, 
I'll meet you at the end of the round to show you how we're moving into round three. So I'm at the end of round two and we're just going to join the last stitch to the first stitch with a slip stitch. So again, inserting into that first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop and then pull that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. Then for rounds three and four, we're going to do these the same way. After we've done our slip stitch join, we're going to yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. And again, if you need that stitch marker support, this is where you're going to place that into your piece. So for rounds three and four, we're going to work one single crochet into each stitch around and we'll join at the end of our round with a slip stitch as we have done in the previous round. So if you'd like to pause your video and work rounds three and four, working one single crochet into each stitch around, don't forget to join with a slip stitch at the end and then chain up and turn. So I'll meet you at the end of round four and show, we're show you how we're going to move on from round four. So I'm here at the end of round four and I'm just going to join my last stitch to my first stitch with a slip stitch. And now we are finished with our first pant leg. So you can grab your scissors and cut a yarn tail of about four to six inches and then just pull that yarn all the way through your slip stitch to finish off pant leg one. All right, so now that you're done pant leg one, you'll need to rewind the video to watch the instructions to do uh, pant leg two. When you get to the end of round four, however, for pant leg two, do not finish off. Continue back to this point and I'm gonna show you how to join your two um, your uh, pant legs together. So I just finished my slip stitch join at the end of round four on my second pant leg. And I'm ready to move on to round five. And again, we're not finishing off this pant leg because we're going to just continue on to join our two pant legs together. So to start round five, we're going to yarn over and chain up two. So yarn over and pull through once, yarn over and pull through twice, and that is your second chain. So now we're going to need our first pant leg. Let me just get those tails out of the way here. And now we're going to work a single crochet into the last stitch of round four of the pant leg. So we're going to insert here into the last stitch of the pant leg one. So if you didn't leave a stitch marker in there, you can, and you haven't woven in your ends, you can find that last stitch by identifying your slip stitch here where your uh, yarn tail is joined to, and then to your left should be your last stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook here into that last stitch, and then I'm going to single crochet. Okay, so now your pants are joined by the chain two. And now we're going to, um, before we actually move on, I wanna move, put a stitch marker in to mark the first stitch or chain, I should say, that is going to become our first stitch in subsequent rounds. So we know where to stop. So we just did that chain two. So we've got our chain one and then our chain two. I'm placing my stitch marker into that chain two here. So then that way I know where we're going to stop and where our first stitch is in subsequent rounds. rounds. So uh, now we're going to work one single crochet all around the top of the pant leg one. So we've already done one single crochet, so we should have 19 single crochets left to do to work all the way around the top of this pant leg. All right, so I've done my 19 stitches around the pant leg one and we're back here at our uh, chain two join. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work one single crochet into each of these chains. Now, if your stitch marker is getting in the way, you can move that out of the way and you're going to be working into the chain, the opposite side of the chain here. So if you find it helpful to turn it so you can see the chain a little easier, you wanna pick up if you've turned it, you want to pick up the, uh, what is essentially the front loops only because you need to leave a loop on the other side 
for you to work into when you get to the other side of the piece. So into that first chain, we're going to single crochet and into that second chain, single crochet. And now I'm just going to place my stitch marker back into the other side of that chain. And we're ready to move on. So now we're going to work one single crochet into each stitch around pant leg two. So we're going to find our last stitch here and single crochet. And then we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. Now remember there was 20 stitches in each pant leg. So there should be 20 single crochets around the top of pant leg two. So now that I've worked all my stitches around the top of pant leg two, I'm back to my chain two join here. And now I'm going to work one single crochet into that first join and or that first chain there. And it can be tricky to see because we've worked into the other side of the chain. So I've got a stitch marker in my second chain and there I can see that there's a little loop. It can be tricky to see right here where my finger is. I'm going to insert my hook there and pick up that loop and single crochet, right? So then we're going to insert a hook into that March chain again, and we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. And then we're going to pull that loop through the loop on our hook to join with a slip stitch. Now at this point, I recommend taking a moment and counting your stitches around because this stitch, uh, especially in the join area here, it's easy to pick up or drop stitches. So at the end of this round, you should have 44 stitches all the way around. And the second chain or our March chain here does count as a stitch, even though we didn't actually work a stitch into it. So take a moment and count your stitches here and make sure that you've got 44 stitches before you move on. All right, so I've counted my stitches. I've double checked my that I've got my 44 and I'm ready to move into round five. To start round five, we're going to yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. And now we're going to work one single crochet into each stitch across. And when we get to the end of this round, remember that marked chain here does count as a stitch. So we are going to place one single crochet into that space as well. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one single crochet into each stitch and chain around, I'll meet you back here at the end of the round and show you how we're finishing off to move into round seven. At the end of this round, you should still have 44 single crochet stitches. So I'm back, I just finished my last stitch of round six. And what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna join my last stitch to my first stitch with a slip stitch. And now before I move on, I'm going to mark my first stitch of the round here. So that way I can keep track of it in the next round. So now I'm gonna chain up one and turn my work. For round seven, we're going to start doing a little bit of decreasing in order to start shaping the waist of our pants. So we're going to start our round with a single crochet decrease. And now what this does is it um, decreases two stitches and turns them into one. So we're going to start that by inserting our hook into the first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. At this point, you should have three loops on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook. And that is your single crochet decrease completed. And now we're going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. There should be 42 uh, stitches left to be worked in this round. And at the end of this round, you should have 43 stitches total. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one single crochet into each stitch around, I'll meet you at the end of the round to show you how we're going to finish off and move into round eight. All right, so we're here at the end of round seven, and we're just gonna finish round seven by joining our last stitch to our first stitch with a slip stitch. Then I'm gonna move my stitch marker up, 
And then I'm going to yarn over and chain up one and turn my work in preparation for round eight. For round eight, we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. At the end of this round, you should still have 43 stitches. So if you'd like to pause your video and meet me back here at the end of round eight, I'll show you how we're going to join our ends together and move into round nine. All right, so I'm here at the end of round eight and I'm just going to join my last stitch to my first stitch with a slip stitch join. Now that I've done that, I'm going to chain up one and turn my work. And I'm ready to start with round nine. For round nine, we're going to work, start this round by placing one single crochet into each of the first 41 stitches. If you don't want to count, I totally get it. What you can do is just work one single crochet into each stitch around until you have two stitches left to be worked in this round. So if you'd like to pause your video and work 41 single crochets or just single crochet around until there's two stitches left to be worked, I'll meet you back here in just a moment to show you how we're going to work into those last two stitches of the round. All right, so I'm back and we have two stitches left to be worked in this round. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be working a single crochet decrease. And so uh, we've already done that once, but I'll show you how to do it again. Inserting your hook into that first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Insert your hook into that next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through all three of those loops to complete your single crochet decrease. Now we're going to join our last stitch to our first stitch with a slip stitch. And then we're going to yarn over and chain up one and we're ready to move on to round 10. I'm just going to move up my stitch marker here. So for round 10, it's a very simple row. We're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. At the end of the round, we'll join our last stitch to our first stitch with a slip stitch join as we've been doing in all other rounds. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one single crochet into each stitch around for round 10, you should have 42 stitches at the end of this round. So I'll meet you back here at the end of round 10 to show you what we're doing in round 11. So we're at the end of round 10 and I'm just doing my slip stitch join here before we're moving on to round 11. To start round 11, we're gonna yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. Now I'm just moving up my stitch marker here. And to start round 11, we're going to start this with a single crochet decrease. So we're going to insert our hook into the first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Insert into the second stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. There should be three loops on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops to complete your single crochet decrease. And to finish round 11, we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around, and then we'll join with a slip stitch at the end of the round. At the end of round 11, you should have 41 single crochet stitches. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one single crochet into each remaining stitch around, I'll meet you back here at the end of round 11, show you how to join and how we move into round 12. So I'm here in the last stitch of round 11. We, I just did my last single crochet and I'm just joining my last stitch to the first stitch with a slip stitch join. And we're ready to move into round 12. For round 12, we're going to yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. Moving up my stitch marker here. And then for round 12, we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. Now at the end of this round, we're going to do something different. So if you'd just like to pause your video, work one single crochet into each stitch around, and then meet me back when you've done, he, um, meet me back here when you've done the last stitch of this round because I'm going to show you how we're going to move on into round 13 and how, how this the end of this round is a bit different. So I just did my last single crochet of round 12 and at the end of round 12 we're not going to be joining our stitches the end and beginning stitches with a slip stitch. We're going to be working in unjoined rows from 
this point forth because we're going to create a little opening at the back to make it easier to put your shorts on your doll. So we're just going to yarn over and chain up one at this point and turn our work. Again, we're not going to be joining those stitches together. So for round 13, we're going to work one single crochet into each of the first 39 stitches. Again, if you don't want to count, you can just work one single crochet into each stitch around until there are two stitches left to be worked. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one single crochet into each stitch until there's two stitches remaining, I'll meet you back here at that point and show you how we're going to work those last two stitches of this round. I am back and I've done my 39 single crochets and I have two stitches left to be worked in round 12. Our goodness, round 13. So what we're going to do in these last two stitches is we're going to do a single crochet decrease. So insert into that first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. There's three loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook to complete your single crochet decrease. At the end of round 13, you should have 40 single crochet stitches. So we're going to chain up one and turn our work. And then we're going to work one single crochet into each stitch around for round 14. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one single crochet in each stitch around, I'll meet you back here in just a moment to show you how we're moving into round 15. So now we're ready to move into round 15. To start round 15, we're going to need to create our buttonhole for the back of our shorts. And to do that, we're going to start with a chain of six. So we're going to yarn over and chain up one, yarn over and pull through again for two. We're going to continue to do this yarn over and pull through until we have six chains. Now that we have our six chains, we're going to turn our work. We're going to skip these six chains and place one single crochet into this last single crochet of the previous round. Now when we do that, we create this little chain six loop here that will act as a buttonhole to fasten our shorts on the back of the doll. To finish off chain, uh, goodness, round 15, we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. At the end of this round, you should have 40 single crochet stitches and your chain six buttonhole space. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one single crochet into each stitch across, I'll meet you back here in just a moment to show you how we're moving into round 16. So I just finished my last stitch of round 15 and I just wanted to show you what the back of your shorts should look like at this point. You should have this little gap in between the two sides and your chain six buttonhole here. So now moving into round 16, we're going to yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. And then we're going to just work one single crochet into each stitch around. When we get to this chain six space, we stop working here in this last stitch. We never work into the chain spaces. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one single crochet into each stitch around, I'll meet you back here at the end of round 16 to show you how we're going to finish off our shorts. So I just finished my last stitch of round 16 and at this point we're ready to finish off our shorts. So I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm going to cut a yarn tail of about four to six inches. And then you can either just pull the yarn all the way through the last stitch or yarn over and pull up a loop and then pull the yarn all the way through. I like to do that yarn over and chain up one just because it helps keep the yarn a little more secure in my opinion. So now that you've done that, you can take your tapestry needle and weave in your ends. And then when you're done, you can take your shorts and I like to lay them flat on a surface. You can try them on your doll first to make sure that they uh, fit and you can find out where you need to place your button. But now that we're done in the shorts, you can take your sewing needle and thread and sew the uh, button onto the back of the shorts across from the chain six loop space 
on round 15. So that way your button loop can come over and go over the button in order to fasten your shorts closed. And so that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed making your crochet doll pajamas. If you did, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing to this channel. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below and I'm happy to help you in any way that I can. If you enjoy free crochet patterns, please check out my blog, theloopylamb.com, where we have over 100 free crochet patterns as well as video tutorials step-by-step -step, just like this one. So thanks again for watching friends, happy hooking, and I will see you next time.